Hello, um, my name's Chris, I'm with JVC, and I'd like to show you uh, the newest JVC firmware update, version 3.5, and I'd like to show you how I use it on my JVC projector. So, first of all, firmware 3.5, we did two things. We improved our Frame Adapt HDR, uh, by adding a feature called Theater Optimizer. Frame Adapt is dynamic tone mapping for 4K HDR content. So we're able to adjust the picture on either a frame by frame or scene by scene basis to give you a better viewing experience with uh, any 4K HDR content. There's also uh, now Theater Optimizer. So what we've done is we've tied this in to your ability to tell the projector uh, some information about your theater. The screen size, the screen gain, uh, your throw distance, and it can even factor in how many hours you have on your lamp. The other feature is the automatic picture select. And uh, this just greatly simplifies the overall user experience. So I'm going to show you what I did. And first of all, you want to uh, update your firmware to version 3.5. And so you're going to go into your menu and you're going to go to your info screen and you're going to check and make sure it says software version V3.5. And if you need to do that update, we've got a separate video on how to do that. So the first thing I want to do is, again, the whole idea here is to show you how I use it. Keep in mind, every theater is different. So this is just a starting point. Your theater is going to be different than my theater. And so how you choose to use it may very well be a little different. But this will give you an idea. So the first thing I would do is set up your automatic picture select. And it's on the second tab of your menu. Uh, it's the fourth item down, auto pick mode select. And if you go to that, your uh, options are SDR 2D, SDR 3D, HDR 10, and HLG. And these are uh, different types of picture signals. And we're going to set up the picture mode we want the projector to use for each of those signals. So SDR 2D, this is your 1080p content. This is uh, any 4K content, which is not HDR. And I like the natural preset, okay? So I'm gonna program that in there. SDR 3D, if you like to use 3D, then I would encourage you to set up a user memory for 3D and you might put that in as user one. And if you want, you can even go into the JVC menu and you can change the name of user one to say 3D. Um, HDR 10 uh, signal, I would choose frame adapt HDR. That's our dynamic tone mapping. And that's by far your best option, I believe, when you're watching HDR10 content. HLG, that's hybrid log gamma, and I would set that to HLG. You may wonder what HLG is. Hybrid log gamma is uh, what many broadcasters are using uh, for 4K HDR content. Uh, just to give you an example of the difference between HDR10 and hybrid log gamma. Uh, HDR10 is uh, what you're going to find with uh, the typical content from Netflix or Amazon Prime Video or any of the other streaming services as well as 4K Blu-rays. Those will all be HDR10. Whereas, for example, the last Olympic broadcast from NBC Universal broadcast 4K HDR content that was hybrid log gamma, gamma, so HLG. So once you've got the automatic picture mode set up for those four signal types, the projector essentially becomes plug and play. Okay, 
Uh, now we're going to talk about uh, setting up Frame Adapt HDR with Theater Optimizer uh, with the new firmware 3.5. So whenever you're watching either a 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray or most 4K HDR streaming content, and by the way, this includes Dolby Vision. Uh, so all of that content is uh, you use uh, the Frame Adapt HDR picture mode is my recommendation with a uh, one of the new native 4K JVC projectors. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, in, in order to adjust this, uh, you need to select some 4K HDR content. Uh, and again, Dolby Vision counts as well. The projector is not Dolby Vision but Dolby Vision has what we call a base layer, which is HDR10, and that base layer signal is what the projector uses uh, for HDR playback. So uh, you're gonna go to your far left menu, and uh, you're going to uh, uh, see, if, if you followed my uh, previous recommendations, you're gonna see that the projector has chosen Frame Adapt HDR. So the first thing you're going to do in the menu is uh, if you have uh, either either a DLA NX7 or a DLA NX9 or a DLA RS2000 or a DLA RS3000, under color profile, you're going to choose either BT2020 normal or BT2020 wide. Uh, wide is going to give you a little, a small additional improvement in color reproduction at the expense of a small reduction in brightness. It uses a color filter. Uh, I like it, so I choose BT2020 wide. If you have either a DLA NX5 or a DLA RS1000, you do not have this option. You will just use BT2020 which is equivalent to the normal uh, non-filter setting on the upgraded models. Um, the next thing you're going to uh, be able to choose is HDR processing. You can choose either frame by frame or scene by scene. I like frame by frame. Uh, I don't see any negative to it. Uh, the positive that I see is I see the projector seems to respond a little more quickly uh, to changes in the picture. Uh, so uh, it, it will bump up the brightness a little bit if needed, and it'll do so a little more quickly uh, on a particularly dark scene. The next item down is the actual theater optimizer. So the first thing you need to do is turn that on. Then after you turn that on, uh, you're going to go to a theater optimizer page, and I'd like you to go right to screen setting. And uh, now you're gonna see a couple of things there, screen adjust, on or off, and then a screen number. This is optional. It's not actually used by the theater optimizer. It just makes sense to have it on this page. We do list a whole bunch of screen codes for all the popular screen brands. And you can go to our website, you can find that code. And if you have it, you can put it in and it's gonna fine tune uh, the, uh, color uh, reproduction, the grayscale in this case, for that particular screen material. If you're not getting a professional calibration, this is a small step toward a slightly more accurate color, and it certainly doesn't hurt to do it. What is important for Theater Optimizer is you're going to tell it screen size and screen gain, and you're going to uh, highlight that particular uh, item, either size or gain, and then you're gonna use the up and down arrows on your remote to pick uh, the appropriate size, and then you're gonna go down to gain, and you're gonna do the same thing there. When you're done, you're gonna go back to Theater Optimizer, and you're gonna go down and you're gonna hit set, is how I do it. It's gonna say processing for a moment, at that point, you're done. Um, do be aware that if you have an ultra wide screen, if you have a 2.35 to one screen or 2.40 or whatever uh, flavor of ultra wide that you have, 
that you want to set up the screen size independently for each of your memories. Uh, also, do note that when you input the screen size, it's in increments of 10 inches, so just round to the closest that's most accurate. And again, if you're using lens memory with an ultra wide screen, you want to put in the equivalent 16 by 9 size uh, for your ultra wide screen. So you want to calculate based on the width of the screen what the actual 16 by 9 uh, image would be because keep in mind with lens memory, it is uh, still projecting a 16 by 9 image. Just you've zoomed it so that the letterbox portion of that image is filling your full uh, viewing area or as close as you possibly can. You'll also notice in the theater optimizer, you have a level setting uh, and the optimized level can be set to low, mid or high. This is very much what I'm going to call season to taste. Uh, it's going to be a setting that you're going to do based on your particular theater and your particular room. I will say that uh, I think as a general rule, if you have a 120 inch uh, or a smaller screen, you'll probably wind up uh, finding yourself choosing either medium or possibly high uh, for some very dark content. If you have a larger screen, 133 or 150, uh, you're more likely to uh, gravitate toward high. And if you have a smaller screen, let's say 100 inch, and particularly if you have a dedicated theater, then you might gravitate more toward the low setting. But again, try it out in your room. There's no right or wrong, whatever you feel looks best. So that's pretty much everything I've got for you. Uh, as always, we really appreciate uh, you choosing JVC, and uh, I hope you uh, enjoy your projector. Thanks.